All right, folks, look, we finna get down to the nitty gritty, right? Some of y'all looking at that thumbnail trying to figure out like, how did he get the bread on that chicken to look like that? Today is the day I'm finna give up all of the gems, right? Today we making fried chicken and I'm giving up the secrets. Let's get it. All right, folks, now listen, you're not gonna wanna skip through this video, right? I'm gonna show you guys how to make sure, like when you're cooking your thighs, how to, you know, to make sure that you get them, you know, cooked properly. I'm gonna show, talk to you about how to like read the signs, you know, when you're going ahead and frying your, your chicken. But listen, sometimes when we do the thighs, you know what I mean? Sometimes next to that bone, some people say, oh, what is that right there? It look like the blood. Man, I'm gonna explain all of that to you in this video, so don't skip. Now, let's go over these ingredients. You can see right here, I went ahead and threw some drumsticks in here. I got some chicken thighs. We're gonna trim and clean them up, right? I'm gonna be using my seasoning inside of my, you know, my flour, because we gotta have seasoning, uh, seasoned flour, right? We're gonna be using cornstarch over here. Look, this is what is gonna make it a little bit extra crispier, right? You probably not already seen the fact that over here, I got flour, right? I'm using a cast iron Dutch oven, right? And this is what I'm gonna be putting my oil in and bringing this up to temp. Then if you back up and look right here, I got two places where I'm gonna be staging. This is after I bread. I'm gonna put everything here, let everything adhere, right? And then when they're done, I'm gonna stage and put everything there so it can drip with the oil. Super easy, folks. Listen, when I tell you this is giving up to the, uh, the secrets, Everybody gonna be an expert. We finna start making fried chicken at the house again. Let's go. Now don't forget, the full ingredient list is on my website. That's smokingandgrillingwithab.com and that's w-i-t-a-b.com for the full screenshotable and printable recipes. All right, look, so we gonna go ahead and get started, right? So I'm just gonna show you, this is the drumstick. Nothing I need to do to this. This is gonna be fine just the way it is. If anything hanging off of there, you know, like, if I feel like I want to get rid of this, I can. You know what I mean? This right here is a piece of the bone when I cut it, when they separated it from the thigh, right? So I'll just take it and put it there. Next, I'm going to go ahead and pull out one of these thighs, right? Now, this would be a perfect example when I say trim. Look at all this tucked under here. We don't want all of that in there, right? Look, look how that was tucked in sometimes. Now, I got to say this, I didn't cook them like this before because I like to have the skin, right? But for what we doing right now, we want this to be more of a commercial type look and we want this to be just the way it is when we buy it, right? So I pull it out, I can feel the meat right there. So if I take it like this, right? Let's get this part, get that over there. We get rid of that skin. Now let's look at it. Oh yeah, this is what we want to have. You know what I mean? This is going to be a nice piece to show, right? So I'm going to throw this piece of skin away. Now I want to show you something else. All right, so this is, okay, so this is, you know, the bony end version of the, you know, the thigh, right? Now this bone, obviously you guys can see it right here. And then I got my finger. You see that right there? Now listen, a lot of times the thickness, this be the thick part of the thigh, right? So it might not get, it might not cook the way we want it to cook. And this is what gives us that little bit of blood, right? So I want you to pay attention to what I did. Look at this right here. I just went ahead and cut that and opened this up just like that, right? This way we could cook down in here and it allowed this bone, when you start getting, when it start getting hot, it'll start pushing everything out and you don't have those little red pockets in there, right? So we just do that. Listen, that's a tip that a lot of people don't tell you, but I want you guys to make it. And when we go ahead and hit it with the flour, we getting flour up in here and all around there, right? It's the nooks and crannies and where it builds up, that's what's gonna give us that crunch, right? So all of this is kind of like open. This is gonna be a great piece. All right, folks, so look, we trimmed up, we ready to go, right? Now, I'm gonna give up the gym. What I'm getting ready to do now, if you want it to be the best it can be and moist as possible, you're gonna wanna uh, go ahead, get yourself some buttermilk. Right, look at that right there. Ooh, we. All right, we got our buttermilk. We're gonna put a little hot sauce. And I don't know about y'all, but we're gonna use Louisiana brand today. All right. Couple pinches of salt. And before I whisk this together, I got a secret ingredient, folks. Now listen, I got about six or seven million people here to tell you this right here is fire. We're going to add just a little bit of pickle juice to this, and then we're going to marinate our chicken. And that's it. We're going to put in about a half a cup. Right? Now, some of y'all are going to say, hey, A.B., was that sweet? 
was that deal. I done done this several times and it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I get the same result with both. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of you guys are gonna have one or the other. Probably have more deal than anything. But you see that right there? That's what I wanna see, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken to it. And we're gonna let this soak. Remember we made that cut? Look at that right there. Right? This is how you get it everywhere. Just make sure you got enough bowls. And I want to tell you this, if you're going to make it, go ahead and just make it. Because listen, everybody's going to be on you about it. Right? Now it's a liquid. It's going to get everywhere. I'm going to put some saran wrap, put this in the oven. Excuse me, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for about, I'm going to say I'm going to probably wait about four hours. You know what I mean? After four hours, we're going to get everything ready and then we're going to go ahead and fry. All right, folks. So listen, now I got myself a bowl, right? I'm going to go ahead and just put my flour in here like this. Now, every, by now, everybody know about you know, using the cornstarch is supposed to be the holy grail of making everything super crispy, which it is. Now look, I want you to just notice this. That's two cups. Look what I did. I just put a heap in. We don't want it to be so crispy like that, right? So that's what we're gonna do. I just put a heap in tablespoon. All right, and then you just wanna, you know, mix it up, right? Now here's the thing we wanna do. I season my flour. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give this two generous, no, let's go with three generous pinches of salt, right? I'm gonna be using my egg. This is great on poultry, and it gives it that little bit of color, right? Now, when you guys go to my website, I'll give you everything that you need, just in case you guys don't have none of this, you know what I mean? But I like to season my flour. I like to see my seasoning. And one thing, you know, it might sound strange to some, I taste my flour. If it tastes like it has seasoning in it, that just helps me out. That tells me, that gives me the assurance that everything is gonna be okay, right? Now, I'm gonna put some black pepper in here. That right there, and that'll, that'll probably do it. And again, when I stir it up, you know, when I whisk it all together, I can look at it and I'll see, but the ultimate test is, I gotta get in here and taste it. All right, just tested it, tasted it, it's fine. It's better than fine, right? So look, I'm gonna just transfer it over here. I could have left it in that bowl, but I like working with like a little flat bowl, just like you see. Okay, so look, I just took these out. Look at this, ooh. You know what I mean? I don't know why I'm doing this right now, just to make it look more appealing to you. You know what I mean? I know some of y'all are still hung up on, did he put pickle juice in there? Yes, sir, I did. And when this is done, oh, let me go ahead and address this part. No, you can't taste the pickle juice. It's what it does to it. It acts as a tenderizer, folks. You know, if you didn't know. So, I'm gonna go just like this. And I'm just gonna add it right there. I'm gonna start off by just doing one, right? So we have it in here, now I'm just gonna coat it. I know some of y'all thinking like, man, my grandma used to put that in that bag. If you're able to even find yourself a paper bag, do it. You know what I mean? It's all good. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick too when I do it. Now, you can see it's completely covered and all of that, right? Check this part out right here. Some of y'all ain't never seen this. I take it and I go like this, right? I squeeze it. You know what I mean? Because I want to make sure I get it in every little nook and cranny. When I take it like this, tap it a couple times, look at that. That's coated, folks. Right? So then I just take it, I put it there, and now you can see. All them little valleys and them little uprisings and all of that, that's what's going to make for some great fried chicken. Okay, so listen, now that I did all of my chicken, right? Like I said, I only did eight pieces just to really show you guys. So listen, I got it staged here on the baking sheet and a cooling rack, right? I like to put it just like that and I like for it to sit up about 15 minutes before I put it in this, you know, this hot grease. And listen, for those of you guys that didn't uh, skip through the video, the real gym is coming up. Okay, folks, look, this is up to temp. I just checked it with my thermometer, right? We had 376. Right, I know that when I take this off, it's gonna, uh, my temperature's gonna drop, right? So I'm gonna put two to three pieces in here, it depends. But look, this is some of that little dough. If you guys wanna know, is it ready? Just drop that in there like that. And you can see it once it starts to work. You know what I mean? It already up, come up to the top. That right there, my friend, tells me my oil is ready. All right, so now that we know that's ready, and look, they got a couple other ways. You guys can stick like wooden utensils in there if it starts to, you know, you know, like uh, boil around the, uh, whatever your utensil is, you know that's ready too, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by using 
I'm going to go ahead and start off by just taking, right? I'm going to take the thigh and I'm going to put this in there. Now notice when I put it in, I'm going to put it in away from me so I don't get any spray. You know, nothing to splash back. Now I'm moving this around like that, you know what I mean? And then drop him in. That's what you want to see, right? Now I'm going to grab my next one. I'm going to give it a shake here. Anything that didn't in here, we wanted to make sure that come off. We do the same thing. I hit it like this a couple times, right? And now I put this in over this way. I can go ahead and put my, you know, my top on, but I got a splatter guard. I'm gonna put this right here so that I can keep everything in the inside and keep from me having to clean the outside, right? I like what I'm seeing. In just a second, I'm gonna wait maybe like a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna make sure that they not touching so they don't adhere together, right? And we only gonna let these go for about two minutes, right? I'm gonna do two minutes on each side. That's all you need. I'm gonna flip them after two minutes. Watch this. All right, so now we flip, right? You see that right there? We on our way, but we gonna get them extra crispy. Now for those of you guys that didn't, you know, skip through the whole video, just stay with me, folks. We not finna cook this where it'll be cooked all the way through. Like I said, we just wanna do two minutes on each side. We gonna take them out and I'm gonna stage them on this, this clean right here, this rack. All right, so look, it's been two minutes. Now we look at it like this. Look at that right there. Some of y'all say, hey, we was on our way, but don't trip. I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here, all right? We just stage that there. Let me look at this one. Oh yeah. If you guys haven't gotten yourself no spiders or nothing like that, you wanna get yourself something like this. Right, so we just put that right there. And don't forget folks, that's that dark meat. All right, so look, I wanna show you guys this. Listen, I check my oil temperature right after I take whatever out. So we wanna look at it. 352, 354, it's on its way up. It should move again, 355. Reason being, cause I'm getting ready to stick some more chicken in there. And when I do, I wanna make sure that my temperature, when it drops, I really don't want it to drop below 350. You know what I mean? Well, to be honest with you, it can go 350, really somewhere between 350, 340. You know what I mean? Somewhere right there. But so I got to adjust my temperature. What I did was I raised it up. Now, with all that talking, check it out. Now we finna drop the drumsticks in. Okay, folks, so listen, this one right here, pull back, I'm gonna show you. This one right here, this is the one I just took out, right? So. I'm gonna show you something. Let's see if I can do it this way. We'll do it this way. Let's see if we can. It's already crispy, but this after being in there three and a half minutes, right? So if you look at that right there, what, 135? Obviously this chicken, this ain't ready. I told you this is all dark meat, right? So dark meat can get to the temperature of, uh, it could even go 170, right? So I put them down as I took them out. So that was the last piece, right? So now we finna double. This is where, we, you know, for those of you guys that didn't skip through, this is gonna do it. I want you guys to hear this crunch when I get done with it too. So right now I'm checking it because I want to be back at 350. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, so we good right now. Oh yeah, we good, all right. Now, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start from the very first ones that I took out. We'll just take this one, right? And I'll just add it right in here like this. Add another one. Right? And then I add this one. Now, you guys are gonna be asking me this. Hey B, how long should it be in there? I don't know. We gonna go check. Once we was at that 350, then we gonna check each piece of meat and when we get to uh, 165, even 170, we'll take it out. 165 would be great. We got crisp on it already. And listen at it right now. Mm. That's what you used to hearing when your grandma was in the kitchen. Okay, folks, look, you can look at it and just see, look, that double fries would give it that extra bit of uh, crispy, crispiness. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys just saw that video that just came out. What was that? Wednesday. You know what I mean? Uh, this was me making uh, Mojo or copycat KFC, you know, wedges. Anyway, it's about this chicken. So I got to take some more pictures of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab this one. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but listen, you can just hear that. So without no further ado, let me just go ahead and put it right here because it's going to break some of that off. But you guys can just hear it. Listen. You see that right there? That's clean all the way down to the bone. 
see how juicy it is? Mm. Now I usually tell y'all hold on, but I'm gonna knock this off real quick and then I'll be back. Sorry folks, unless you want me to dig in the trash can and pull that bone out. You know what I mean? I ate everything. Ate more than I normally would. You know what I mean? But listen, super easy to make, right? Remember, the key wasn't really in that double fry. You know what I mean? We just wanted to go about three to four minutes when you first put them in there. Let them sit up, work your way till you're done with all your batches. Then you go back in there. You know what I mean? At about 350. I know the temperature is going to drop a little bit, but that's okay. Because we didn't already got the color. We got the crispiness on the outside. Then we cooking to make sure we got 165. All right. I was just looking right now to see where my thermometer is, but here it is right here. Listen, these are key. Whether you use mine, you know, mine just happened to have the signature on there, you know what I mean? So you guys can see it, you know what I mean? Just a cool little memento to just say smoking the grilling with AB. Everything is here. Remember, 165, stay alive. Now, with that being said, talk to me down in the comment section below. Let me know what else would you have add to your flour to take it over the top. You know what? I did have a little trick. I could have put a little bit of that uh, onion powder in there too. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to take the time to like this video. I want you to share it and I want you to tell everybody out there there's a channel out here to simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Now, I don't want to seem greedy, but I got potatoes. Oh, I got one for you. If you stayed this long, tell me. Sweet pickles or deal. I'm out. Peace.